All right, students, so we are talking about compound interest here. All right, so uh, compound interest um, is a situation where anytime you have something uh, growing, um, some amount that is be, uh, increasing, uh, there's a, an amount that's being added, and then that amount that is added is sort of stuck to it. And then the next time around, um, more is added based on that new amount. A uh, classic example here is um, uh, money in a bank. Uh, if you give, uh, maybe you put a thousand dollars and you give that to the bank or you store that in the bank, uh, they're going to go and they're going to spend it and they're going to lend it out to other people rather than they're going to make money from it and they'll say, hey, we'll give you 10% interest, which by the way, that would be amazing. Um, but for this <laughs> demonstration here, uh, we'll say they give you 10% interest, which means um, they are going to, at the end of the year, they're going to take 10% uh, of what you gave them and they are going to uh, uh, give that amount to you. So at the end of the year, you get um, an extra $100 uh, from the bank. So uh, you end up with that initial $1,000, it's, it's still there in the bank, plus that $100 interest. And so now you have $1,100. Hooray, that's awesome, good job. Uh, and then you take that amount and you say, hey, I want to leave it in the bank. So they're still offering 10% interest. And uh, what's interesting is that the second year, uh, ten, it's going to be 10% of that $1,100, which is $110. So uh, we're super happy because we're getting even more this year in interest than we did before uh, because our initial amount there at the beginning of the year was different. So we're going to have that... Uh, $1,100 uh, that we had to be in the year plus this $110. So now we have $1,210. And this cycle just continues. So we start off with uh, 1210 at 10%. So 10% of that is obviously just the 121. And at the end of the year, we have $1,331. And uh, this is great. You can notice here we've got our interest payment that the bank was giving us went, you know, initially it was $100, then it was $110, then it's $121. Um, so even our, our, our interest payment that, that, that they're paying us is going up. Uh, it was $10 here, then it, uh, it was $11 more than that. Um, so that's great. Um, so not only is our money increasing, but the rate at which it is increasing is increasing. So anyway, so uh, Start off with a 1331, 10% of that would be $133.10. So we end up with around this one, 1464. So end of one year, end of two years, end of uh, three and four years. Okay, so uh, that's great. We can see this growing. Um, so just a couple of things to notice is that the, uh, the interest payment is obviously going up every year. Uh, this is what is um, an essential element of uh, compound interest rather than simple interest where simple interest is just the same amount every year or whatever um, so it's uh, it's not just a hundred dollars per year it's uh, um, it's ten or even ten percent uh, it's more appropriate to say it's ten percent of what you start with at the beginning of that year is uh, is what your payment is what 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 gets added to it. And my happy face here look kind of sad. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and do that same process algebraically so we can create a formula. So traditionally we use P for the principal, that's that initial amount at R percent. So our interest payment would be P times R. That's how we got that hundred dollars was that one thousand times point one. So P times R and uh, the end of year amount is going to be that initial P value plus P times R. Um, for reasons which will become obvious here momentarily, we are going to factor out a P and label that and rewrite that as P times the quantity 1 plus R. Great. So, year two. We start off with P times 1 plus R, once again, at R percent. Our uh, interest, that's this column right here, is going to be that uh, P times 1 plus R, that's that initial amount, times R. And that gives us, if we think about this, um, how much are we going to have at the end of the year now? It's this amount, P times 1 plus R, plus this amount right here, the interest. So 
P times 1 plus R times R. And then we can see this first term uh, has a P times 1 plus R, and this second term over here has a P times 1 plus R. So let's factor out a P times 1 plus R out of uh, both this term and this term. What's left in this first term is just going to be a 1. What's left in this term over here is just an R. So now we have P times 1 plus R times 1 plus R, which conveniently can be written as P times 1 plus R squared. It's the same thing, multiplied by itself. So that's how much we would have at the end of the second year. So uh, we'll just do this one last time here. So uh, P times 1 plus R squared at R percent, the interest rate would be P times 1 plus R squared times R. That's our that's how much the bank's going to give us in interest, the initial amount times R percent. So the uh, the final amount they'll have at the end of the year, I'm going to write down here because it's going to be kind of large here. It's that P times 1 plus R squared plus the interest, which was P times 1 plus R squared times R. Notice both the first term and the second term have a P times 1 plus R squared, so I'll factor out a P times 1 plus R squared. And what's left in this first term is just a 1, and what's left in the second term is just an R. And so now I have P times 1 plus R squared times 1 plus R, which we can write as P times 1 plus R cubed. And we notice, ah, at the end of the first year, there we could write that as a little 1 up there as that exponent. And then obviously you have the 2 and 3, um, which leads us um, to the conclusion that after n years, our final amount is a it's p to the r p times one plus r to the n, where n is our number of years. And uh, we can write that equation here, graph it. So I have thousand uh, dollars, <throat> one plus my r value is ten percent, so point one uh, raised to x. So this is graphing it for for year one, for year two, for year three, for year four. Uh, this little friendly bracket here is just telling us that I want x greater than zero because I didn't want this to go to negative years. That would just be kind of kind of weird. Um, clearly, you can see this is an exponential function where we have something to the x power or x our independent variable is up in the exponent location. And uh, hey, yeah, there we go. That's a, that's an exponential curve. But we can see if we did carry this out, it would clearly uh, look very much a lot closer to what our exponent functions look like. Um, just to throw in some uh, x values here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, hopefully I calculated those right earlier, which looks like I did. Uh, let's plug in 10, so we get uh, around 2,500. Uh, let's get 20, we get around 6,000. Wow, so just let that money sit for 20 years and you've got $6,700. 6,700 that is. So, um, new idea over here on the right. Um, some banks compound, that is, they pay interest uh, twice a year, but at half that annual rate each time. Uh, so the uh, formula B in that sort of situation, A equals P times 1 plus R over 2 times N times 2, where uh, that annual rate, if you like the 10%, we would divide that by 2, because what they're doing is they, they pay like 5%, um, you know, after six months, and then they pay another 5% on whatever is there. And you're like, oh, they're only paying 5%, but yeah, but they're paying 5% twice. Um, and we, if we plug in this formula, uh, we'll find out that it actually turns out better for you. Um, not like hundreds of thousands of dollars better, but we'll see here. So adding um, another set of points here, I'll change this to a 0.1 over 2, and I'll change that exponent to a 2x. And uh, you can see these dots there. They're a little bit higher than the other dots. Um, instead of having $1,100, we have $1,102.50. <laughs> Here, instead of uh, 1210, we have 1215. So five more dollars and, and 50, 50 cents. Well, 51 cents, I guess. Um, but uh, the thing is, is that that difference just continues to increase. As you can tell, it's it's hard to it's hard to identify the differences here uh, early on, but at the 10, the 15, the 20 year part, we can clearly see a visible difference that that uh, semi-annual compounding uh, rate is better for us. Even to the point here, for 20 years, is a difference between $6,700 and $7,000. So it's working up to a couple hundred dollars uh, difference there. And I think I uh, 
if you up that to about 50 years, uh, you can see $117,000 versus $131,000. Wow, let's find that 10% interest. All right, so uh, new slide over here. Uh, most financial institutions compound quarterly, at least if you're trying to put your money in there. If it's the other way around where they're loaning you the money, they want the money back every month, like for uh, for car payments and uh, for house payments and things like that. So <laughs> you're on the other end, other side of those things when you're when you're borrowing the money. So uh, in that situation, the formula is uh, one plus r over four, and then n times four. Uh, it's still better for you. Uh, you're still getting a little bit more money each time, uh, but that that increase uh, in the amount is not as much um, as you got from the annual to the semi-annual. So there's a little bit of a bump, but the bump is not as much um, as we saw earlier. And we'll kind of look at that here in the graphs. So copy that over here, add another set of data. So you can see if I change that uh, to 0.1 over 4 and 4x, we can see these... Uh, uh, black dots here. They're a little bit higher than the purple ones, uh, which was the semi-annual. So we've got the annual with the red, semi-annual with the purple, and quarterly with the black dots here. Uh, there is a jump from the red to the purple and from the purple to black, but that the jump from the purple to black is not as much as it was from the red to the black, or from the red to the purple, rather. And uh, I'm going to grab these and... Uh, create those other uh, lines so that now I've got the black is the for whatever reason they changed the color on me but that's fine this is the semi-annual and the blue is the quarterly and if we zoom in we can definitely see that it's uh, it's getting better but not as much that kind of makes you think oh well what if I were to compound my money uh, monthly and you're welcome to try that you'll see that um, once again it does go up but it goes up by a lesser amount and you could say what if I compound it weekly or daily or you know every minute by minute <laughs> um, you could do that or even second by second you know but um, that amount that that the uh, the function is is increasing is, is by a lesser and lesser amount and eventually it's going to approach um, a very specific equation it's actually not too far off from it right now um, where you can imagine even if you were compounding it, compounding your money uh, instant by instant second by second or even, even nanosecond by nanosecond an infinitely small uh, percentage rate for an infinitely small <laughs> uh, time period all right so uh, we'll kind of sketch that graph here in a second. So uh, before we just kind of wrap things up, just the, the generic interest formula uh, for um, an initial amount, P, um, an annual rate, R, um, if it's the number of times that it's compounded per year, um, N. So if it's annually, then that would be one. Semi-annually, this would be two. Quarterly, this would be three, or sorry, four. Monthly, this would be 12. And then for the number of years, um, and your final amount, uh, A, that formula is A equals uh, P times uh, 1 plus R over N to the NT power. Um, just to kind of sketch that other graph that we saw a moment ago, um, that's the annual. This is semi-annual, just sort of um, kind of making it rather extreme here. Uh, so that's the quarterly. Then you could have, you know, like the monthly. We can see they're uh, they're not uh, getting more and more vertical, but they are clearly approaching some sort of exponential. And uh, one of the really neat things is that that exponential function that they're approaching is something called the continuous uh, compounding situation. And uh, with some higher math, we can uh, find that that's equal to a equal p to the or p times e to the rt where e is that uh, Euler's number uh, that we saw it's not even it's not a 1 plus r over n it's a e right there so uh, that's if you are con <laughs> continuously compounding um, which that is crazy that means you are uh, like I said a moment ago um, cutting time down into an infinitely small uh, chunks but you are also uh, dividing that uh, per annual percentage rate into an infinitely many uh, pieces so it's a very small 
amount of time, very small percentage, but uh, it turns out to be a finite uh, amount that's compounding. So some interesting stuff there. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this was compound interest and the formulas, and uh, we'll talk next about how to apply these formulas.